Hi everybody, welcome to Ballistic Breakthrough. I'm just really excited today to remind you who you are. I have a brand new grandbaby. Haven't gotten to meet her yet, but it's coming very soon. And I was talking to her this morning on the phone and I was telling her how excited we were that she was part of the family. And I was just praying for her and just calling forth who she would be, who God dreamed she would be from the beginning of time. And today we're, we're in Ephesians chapter two, which is so awesome because I feel like the Lord wanted me to remind you that that's exactly how he feels about each of us. It's how he feels about you. When he looks at you, it's how I feel about this brand new baby. Just, she is perfection. And you know what? She is such a gift. And when I look at her, I don't see the mistakes that she's going to make. I don't see the things she's going to do and the places she'll fall in her life. I see the promise in her. That's exactly what God sees when he looks at each of us right now today. So let me read to you from Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. Even before you were born, God planned in advance our destiny and the good works we would do to fulfill it. Verse 13, look at you now, everything is new. Although you were once distant and far away from God, now you have been brought delightfully close to him through the sacred blood of Jesus. You have actually been united to Christ. Our reconciling peace is Jesus. Verse 18, and now because we are united to Christ, listen to this. We both have equal and direct access to come before the Father because of the Holy Spirit in us. So you are not foreigners or guests. My friends, listen to this. But rather, you are children of the city of the Holy Ones with the rights of family members of the household of God. You are rising like perfectly fitted stones of the temple, and your lives are being built up together upon the ideal foundations laid by the apostles and the prophets. And best of all, you're connected to the head cornerstone of the building, the anointed one, Jesus Christ himself. This entire building is under construction and is continually growing under the supervision until it rises up completely as the holy temple of the Lord himself. This means God is transforming each one of you into the Holy of Holies, his dwelling place, through the power of the Holy Spirit living in you. Here's the secret, Ephesians 3, verse 6. The gospel of grace has made you into co-heirs of his promise. Through your union with Christ, you have now become members of his body. Verse 9, and my passion is to enlighten every person to this divine mystery. You know, God had a dream. His dream was for family. His dream was family. He gave Adam and Eve the garden the best of the best. He used to walk with them in the cool of the night, just listen to them, teach them. And when the enemy came, he deceived them. And everything God had given them, the keys to the kingdom, they gave to Satan. We made such a mess of that through salvation history that as I said the other day, God had to send God to come get us out of that mess. But on the cross, Jesus' sacrifice gained back what was lost in the garden. And because of that, we've become not only children, but scripture calls us co-heirs with Christ. This is so critically important because we spend so much time thinking we have to be worthy. My friends, we'll never be worthy thinking we have to be holier and, and better and do more and earn it. We can't earn the gift of salvation. It's free. 
Jesus loved us so much. The Father loved us so much that he came and he gave his life. He took on all of our sins that we'd ever commit and nailed them to the cross and offered us his righteousness, which means rightness, being in right relationship with the Father. And now scripture says, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Glory, the weightiness, everything good and heavy from heaven, the the weightiness of goodness, the glory. There's stories in the Old Testament where the, the priests would be in a room and the glory of God would come and they couldn't even stand up. They would fall under the weight of glory. And they could see God's presence because of the glory. And now we get to carry the glory because we carry Jesus. And for us, carrying the glory of God, our joy and our job as children of God, as co-heirs, as people on a mission, as this generation's disciples, is to make Jesus easy to see. In this time that we're living right, right now, have you ever felt like you needed to see Jesus's presence more in the world. We need to go back to being a show and tell church. We owe people an encounter with Christ. How are we believing? The mission on the mountain is full of precious people who have encountered the power and the presence of the living God and the love of God. And we, it is, as this says, our passion to enlighten every person to this divine mystery because this is your inheritance as a believer. This is your inheritance as a believer to not only carry the living God, but to be a co-heir, to have an inheritance, to have available to you things in the kingdom right now. When Jesus said, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, he didn't say, you know, kind of just think about it. Why don't you pray for him? Of course we pray for him. But if he said it, it's possible. And I can't wait to open up teachings on healing. But for right now, I want to stir in you the possible. The same miracles in Acts of the Apostles and all throughout the New Testament. And all throughout the Old Testament, the same miracles are available to us today. And in this world right now, do you think we need to see the power and the presence of God visible? Yes. Will everybody we pray for be healed? No. But 100% of them won't be healed if we never even try. In Matthew 4, it said Jesus went all around Galilee and he taught and he preached and he healed. And throughout the New Testament, a hundred percent, a hundred percent of the people that Jesus, that came to Jesus for healing were healed. A hundred percent. My friends, when the Holy Spirit was given to his apostles, he was given, the spirit of Jesus living in them was given for them to be able to continue Jesus's mission on earth. That same Holy Spirit is given to us in this generation to continue Jesus' mission on the earth. So let's think about the possible. Look at you now. Everything is new. Lord, this is our prayer that everything be new. That although we were once distant and far away, even with our ability to see and understand and think that this was possible, Now we've been brought delightfully close through the blood of Jesus. We've actually been united to Christ. Lord, teach us what it means to be united to Christ. Teach us what is accessible to us right now. What kingdom realities can we access right now? Give us gifts of healing, Lord. Give us gifts of heart healing. Give us the gift of joy, of being able to bring hope to people. Give us the gift of reading hearts of knowing where people are suffering, of holding hearts as they work through. Lord, give us belief in you, supernatural faith, supernatural hope, supernatural love to live in the world today. And we bless you. We thank you, Jesus. And I just pray for your people right now that veils be ripped off eyes, my common prayer, that they know who they are. 
that they know who they are in Christ and that this moment there is joy in that knowing. Amen and amen. Thanks for coming.